Alright everybody, for today's Critical Thought, we're going to be talking about aesthetics and how the look of your game can impact the playing and design of it. Now this will be based on an earlier Critical Thought where we talked about the difference between graphics and aesthetics. The graphics of a game are simply the raw power or fidelity of how the game looks, while the aesthetics represent a unique style or look to the game that distinguishes it from everything else. And in that piece we talked about how when it comes to graphical power the AAA market cannot be matched with developers making use of the Unreal 4 engine, Call of Duty, Battlefield, Doom, and so on and so forth. But when it comes to a strong aesthetic style a lot of those games tend to look the same as they are just pushing for power rather than a unified theme. When it comes to the independent side, because many indie developers don't have million dollar art budgets, they tend to have to get creative and focus on a unique aesthetic that essentially drives the brand forward. And when it comes to aesthetic design, a great aesthetic doesn't mean having really powerful graphics or a really powerful game engine. All means is that the entire game basically has that unified look and branding to it that someone can look at this game and immediately know what it is. They don't need to look up you know, the game's title, look at the name of the screenshot. A really good example or a good counterpoint about this is if you were to show people like various scenes out of the different Call of Duty games, outside of these stark differences, you know, like the Future Warfare and like World War II, it would be very hard to say which game these uh, cutscenes came from. On the other hand though, you show someone a screenshot of Undertale, Renowned Explorers, or even um, older titles like Spelunky and FTL and chances are if they've heard of those games they'll be able to recognize those screenshots. Now with that said though there's always a catch when it comes to a strong aesthetic. The big one obviously is that it requires a lot more work to do properly. Remember you're not just designing the look of the game you have designed a unique style that is going to permeate every inch of it. Some games just simply go as far as the graphics, others designers will go as far as adjusting and changing the UI of the game to match the aesthetics of it. And this is where things can get very tricky in terms of game design. Because one of the things about having a unified aesthetic is that everything looks the same. And when that happens, it becomes very easy for things to basically run together or bleed together and can be hard to properly process what's going on. A good example of that lately would be from Cuphead, which has the style or the aesthetics of a 1930s cartoon. And while the game looks gorgeous, everything is basically looking the same. And because of that, when the screen starts to fill with enemies and projectiles and all manner of things going on, it is very easy to lose Cuphead in the mix of things. Another point is when it comes to Cuphead in terms of projectiles, the game makes use of multiple colors. You have black for bullets, red fireballs, I'm sure color blue is thrown in. The only color that you can actually parry or actually defend against is pink. And what happens, it's very easy to focus so much on pink that when the enemy throws a different color at you that you weren't expecting, your brain basically doesn't process it. Or at least I know that's happened to me several times. This is why when you're dealing with games that have a lot of action to them, along with a strong aesthetic, developers tend to pick polarizing colors for bad things. A brilliant example of this comes from the shmup or bullet hell genre. In bullet hell, these screens are just completely filled with all manner of projectiles aimed at killing you. And what developers usually do is kind of like have this. You have the background layer, you have the bullet layer here, and then you have the player itself on top. And what ends up happening is when things start to go overboard, because the bullets are their own unique color, it essentially becomes a layer onto itself. You don't even really process the background anymore. You're just busy focusing on the pink or light blue or whatever color is coming your way. And it becomes a lot easier to process compared to if 
the colors of the bullets were either close to or, uh, heaven forbid, the same colors as the background. And one of the most important no-nos to follow when it comes to aesthetic design is that the aesthetic should not get in the way or make the game harder to play. Earlier this year, I did a Let's Play series of a shoot 'em up that featured like roguelike design, whose name completely escapes me. And there's one part in the game where the bullets are actually being covered or they're being blocked by the lava effects in the background. And the developer said that was on purpose to make those sections extra hard. But again, that can be seen as making the game cheap by the fact that you're basically using your own art against the player. Now another major point about a strong aesthetic is you have to be careful about making things a little too strong. Earlier this year we looked at the Shrouded Isle, a cultist adventure simulator from Kid Fox Games. And what they did was use a, basically they used very stark or contrasting colors to create this feeling of unease and dread in the game. So you have like a I'm not even sure what kind of yellow we call it, mixed with like a bluish green, or you have like a pink and a light dark blue. Again, I don't know colors all that well, but any screenshot you see of the Shroud Isle, you know what that game is. It's that striking. The problem is that it's so much of a strain on your eyes that it can become very hard to play the game. For myself, I could probably play for maybe 30 minutes to an hour, and that's with like looking on and off the screen, usually at chat or something, before my eyes started to bother me. And you have to be really careful when it comes to these aesthetics. Now, there is a greater talk to be had regarding aesthetic design when it comes to first-person shooting or first-person motion in games. There have been a lot of people who have suffered from seasickness and nausea while they're playing first-person games. And for people who have tested out VR, that can also be a major issue there. Now when it comes to VR, I believe the issue has to do more with the frames per second being displayed you know, with the camera like this close to your eyes. But when it comes to first-person shooters, there have been issues. I think it has something to do with like the head bob, or you know how when you're moving, the screen's going up or down or side to side to represent motion, and that can make people very nauseous. Now, fortunately for me, I have not had to deal with that kind of issue in my time. The worst I had to deal with was playing the original Game Boy, and the fact that it didn't have a backup color, the eye strain of trying to look at that darkened screen caused me nothing but headaches back in the day. Now, for people watching us, or developers who have dealt with accessibility issues, what are some common uh, options to help cut down on that seasickness when it comes to video games? Uh, definitely let me know in the comments below. But, to wrap up today's critical thought, a strong aesthetic can do so much to tie a game together, and when it's done right, it can create a game that really lasts the test of time. This is why games that go for raw graphical power tend to not age well, because when you're only dealing with the power with the technology that's available, when new technology comes out, it makes everything else obsolete. This is why a lot of first generation uh, 3D games look like the stuff of nightmares, and why 2D even back then, and of course to this day, still holds up, even if we're talking about basic pixel graphics such as Mega Man, Mario, and the like. Because even though those games back in the day were pushing graphics, there's a strong sense of style to them. Now, obviously with Mega Man, it's kind of hard to tell between Mega Man's 1 through 10 unless you've played them. But again, stuff like Super Mario, uh, Metal Gear, or even, basically even we could say future Mario games, all have that strong sense of style. And Nintendo has been one of the few AAA companies who have done well in that regard. When you look at stuff like Super Mario Sunshine or Super Mario Galaxy, while these games are certainly not the most graphically intensive games on the market, the style stands out and makes them be a lot more uh, visibly recognized or visually recognized compared to other titles, and of course it makes them still look good to this day. A really brilliant example of this will be of course The Legend of Zelda Wind Waker, especially the HD version. You can put that on today and it still looks as amazing as when people first played 
uh, the Wii version or of course the original GameCube version. But for those of you watching this, I asked two questions. For consumers, can you think of other great examples of a strong aesthetic? And especially, can you think of them from the AAA market? And again, a strong aesthetic is something that makes this game visually striking. That if I see the screenshot, I know exactly what this game is from. And again, it's not about raw graphical power. Just because you can see, you know, it's so high def, you can see, you know, the hair or the veins on my arms, doesn't mean that it is visually or aesthetically pleasing. And for any artists watching this, what kind of process do you go through when you are trying to design the aesthetics? And depending upon my reach, we'll open this up to, you know, cartoons, comics, TV shows, whatever. How do you go about creating the aesthetic for something and have that be, become essentially the universal feel or flow for that respective property? Let me know in the comments below, but thank you so much for watching. If you're new, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. Check back for daily discussions on game design here and on Game Wisdom, where we examine the art and science of games. Until next time, have a good evening. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. For my writings as well as weekly podcasts, check out game-wisdom.com. For ways of supporting Game Wisdom and get access to rewards such as VIP status, as well as voting for the Saturday Night Grab Bag, check out patreon.com slash gwbicer. You can follow me on Twitter at gwbicer for my daily thoughts as well as updates as to what's going on. So thanks again for watching, and be sure to check out our next video coming real soon to the channel.